Hello everyone in this video, let us take a look at uh, how to use uh, script runner's behavior to make your uh, original estimate field or basically to pre-populate your original estimate field based on uh, the priority field. So let me create one uh, issue in uh, my my Jira instance and right now I'm trying to raise a bug. Now in this particular uh, create issue screen I have uh, the option to fill up my priority and I also have the option to uh, fill up my original estimate. So let me just uh, select uh, only the fields that are uh, uh, in, that I'm interested in showing you. So I'll just uh, select my uh, priority field and my time tracking field. So if you look at the form right now, uh, the, uh, the original estimate is uh, zero, uh, but it is something that we can uh, pre-populate based on the priority field. So if I select, let us say my priority as highest, the original estimate is uh, 24 hours. If I select my priority as medium, it is not 24 days. If I select uh, priority as lowest, it is 48 days. Now, this is of course done using uh, script runner's behavior and I'll show you how it is done. Uh, so before I show you how it is done, I'll probably create this issue. I need to end, add a summary. Uh, this is my test issue, of course. And when you create a test issue, you have the op option to, of course, uh, take a look at uh, your original estimate that you just filled in, but you can change it. Uh, and for changing it, you need to click on the edit. Of course, you can change it directly, but the behaviors work on create and edit screens. So you, you need to click on edit. And uh, if I now, let me just select my fields. Let me just focus on priority and uh, uh, where is my time tracking? Oh, anyway, so let me just uh, select uh, time tracking. Okay, I can find it. So in this particular uh, screen, I have the option to change it to maybe high now and the original estimate is now 24 hours. So this can be of course seen here uh, when you click on the update. So for doing this, you need to create uh, uh, a behavior and for doing that, you need to go to the uh, script runner. Right uh, and when you when you have a script runner installed, you have the option to click on the behavior, and to create a new behavior, to create a new behavior, you need to give your behavior a name and description. So my behavior name is uh, popular estimate or uh, populate estimate basically. So I think I will probably change the name. So when you look at uh, the um, the behavior, you have to first uh, define the mapping. So you don't really want your behavior to be applicable uh, across all the projects. So you can uh, map it to a specific uh, uh, project and also a specific issue type. So that is really good. And once you do that, you can then specify on which field you want to uh, have this behavior applicable. Now. I want this particular uh, behavior to be applicable on uh, my uh, my priority field. So this this particular field is already selected here. But if you want to do it again, let us say you want uh, to do this uh, behavior on uh, maybe your summary or uh, or some specific field. So you can specify your field here, and uh, once you specify the field here, you can then uh, add a server side script. So this is something that I have already done in my uh, behavior. And uh, if you look at this uh, script, of course, it is uh, a very simple groovy script. And the most important part here is to fetch the value of uh, the, pr the, the priority. So right now the priority is, uh, of course, uh, the field that is uh, changing because we are trying to change the value. And based on the uh, selected based on the priority that you select you want to fetch the name of the priority so because uh, i want to check it whether uh, this particular field uh, value is equal to highest or high or medium or low and 
then you also need to uh, specify the field that you want to update. So right now I'm using this variable OE, original estimate, and uh, you can um, uh, fetch the, 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 I mean, you can actually fetch the field uh, by using this uh, method get field by ID. But if you want to set the form value, like the, the value that you see on the form, uh, you can do that using set form value, which is of course uh, uh, a method of, uh, I mean, you, you can do this uh, for OE field. So this particular piece of code is very simple. You are simply selecting, or you're basically first fetching the value of the priority, uh, especially the name. Uh, which is of course in this uh, stored in stored in this variable selected priority and then you're just doing a simple check if priority is equal to highest uh, then set the form value as 24 hours if it is high you are setting it as three days and so on so this piece of code is uh, not very complicated and uh, to be honest this is not really my code i got this uh, piece of code uh, from uh, one of my subscriber who sent me this code uh, and uh, and that subscriber was uh, complaining about uh, the code was not working so i sent her the exact code exact this code that is actually working uh, by doing some slight modifications but uh, uh, if you just try to do the same thing you can do the same thing on um, any other field uh, it, it, i mean this is of course just an example where i'm trying to set the value of uh, the uh, the time tracking field, especially the original time tracking, uh, original estimate field, which is of course uh, the field that is uh, this one, original estimate. You can also do the same thing for uh, other fields, but you need to know how to use behaviors uh, by simply creating a mapping, uh, maybe for a project and issue type, and then. Uh, defining uh, which field uh, you want to use where you want to apply this uh, mapping right now i'm uh, uh, i mean we want to want to check for this particular change when you change the priority when you do any the moment you click on the priority drop down uh, you're triggering this uh, behavior to work so uh, this is a very simple piece of code one thing that i uh, wanted to mention today is that uh, when you are working on the behaviors you can of course do the debugging you can set the, uh, I mean, you can have some messages like debug messages. And these debug messages will work only when you set the log, uh, I mean, th the log level as debug. Uh, when you go to the Jira logging settings, uh, it should be, I mean, the level should be debug. And uh, you also need to make sure that uh, the, the logs are enabled. Uh, for this particular behavior. So there is a there is a toggle here, like a flag kind of a link. If you click on it, disable logging, logging will be disabled, or if you uh, click on it again, it will be enabled. So make sure you enable the logging here. Uh, and uh, of course you are, in your code, you can of course uh, try to print some log messages. At the same time, the, the level should be correct. If you go to logging and profiling, and if you scroll down, the default, uh, logging level should be set to debug so once the once you do these two de, these two things uh, you will see that uh, you can actually uh, take a look at uh, your log messages uh, in your log file and for doing that you can actually use a script runner so you don't really need to log into server uh, and of course do a tail of your uh, uh, log file you can use a built-in script called uh, view server log file and uh, if you just run it of course you need to click on the run button couple of, like for every time for every change but still it is okay i mean if you don't have access to the server i think it works uh, really well and if you uh, just search for priority field maybe let me just uh, show it to you very quickly if i change it to maybe low and if i go back to my my built-in uh, script I should have uh, something here. So let me just search for uh, priority. So yes, you can see here that uh, uh, if the log level is set correctly as debug and the logging is enabled for behavior, then you can actually use uh, those messages, debug messages. It really helps in uh, 
in understanding how to write code because right now I'm fetching the name of uh, the priority uh, field but uh, it may be something else. So let me show you what I mean and I'm trying to show you this because uh, this will really help you if you're trying to learn uh, script enough for Jira like how to do debugging and how to learn uh, which method to, method to use. So if you click on uh, the fields, you'll be taken to the uh, actual script. And here you can see that I'm trying to fetch the name uh, of uh, the selected priority. Let me just change it to something else. Let me just change it to two string so that uh, you can see uh, what is, uh, I mean, what exactly you can uh, retrieve when you're trying to fetch the value of uh, the priority field. So let me just save it. And if I go back to my um, my original uh, issue, I'll just uh, click on the edit again. I'll change it to maybe low. And now I want to see what I can uh, see in the log file. So if I click on the run again, and if I do a control F or command F, and if I search for a pri priority, so I don't see anything in the priority, a priority, okay, no, no, so there is nothing in this. Uh, um, so maybe there's an error, maybe uh, it didn't uh, work. So let me just click on the run again. And uh, let me just try to search. So I can't really retrieve anything. Let me just uh, do a refresh. And uh, I'll also verify if this is correct. So I'm trying to print the selected priority and I'm trying to retrieve a get value. Let me let me just uh, um, let me remove this. And to Okay, yeah, l l let us try to do this first. And uh, let us just see if we are able to uh, see uh, I mean, if you want to find out uh, the exact method name, uh, this is a re really nice way. So let me just change it to high or medium something like I'm just trying to change the priority. And if I run this again, so I think I, I'm not sure if I'm able to see something here. Priority. Okay, so you can see here that I'm able to so I, I'm logging priority and it says issue constant implement uh, and it says generic entity priority and it also has uh, other things like uh, it is actually returning you I believe uh, I mean I think it is an object sequence three uh, status color name is medium so there is I mean the, I mean it will re retrieve it you can actually do a lot of things I mean uh, we were earlier trying to fetch the name and you can do that if you do get name but you can also fetch uh, the ID which is I believe uh, the sequence, you can also have a uh, uh, description. Uh, so I ID is actually three. Uh, and uh, then the, the name is the medium, you can have the icon URL. But of course, we want to fetch uh, not really the uh, the whole object, but uh, we want to fetch uh, the uh, name. And if you want to find out what all you can do, you can do type in get here. And if you can see here that uh, you can have get ID, which is of course, uh, uh, three, or get name, or you can have get name translation. So if, even if you do get name translation, it will uh, retrieve, uh, it will give you the uh, the name based on of course, the language uh, that you're using. So let us do that. And uh, if you go back to the issue, and if we do a refresh, and let us try to do it again, if I trigger something, maybe low or maybe high. So you can see that the behavior is uh, working. And if I go back to my built in script, if I do a run, so now we can see here that the priority is low or high. So uh, this is how you can use the behavior. Uh, you just need to of course, uh, click on, uh, I mean, you just need to understand uh, the right method to use. And uh, if you want to learn behavior, there is a link also called API Qu quick reference. It will help you in understanding uh, how to fetch the field values by name or by ID. And you have, of course, a lot of other details like how to get the value, how to 
set error messages if you want and so on so i recommend that you uh, take a look at the uh, methods that you have available with you when you're using uh, behavior with uh, of course your groovy script so this is all i want to uh, share in this uh, video i hope you learned and you enjoyed watching this video thank you very much